could ChatGPT ever be more than just a chatbot? What's up guys, my name is Jason and this is Learn, Build, Repeat. OpenAI released ChatGPT November 30th, 2022 and almost right from the beginning I've been fascinated with it. Now, I'm sure by now that you've likely heard of it and have used the ChatGPT website. But I've always wondered to myself, what would it actually be like to talk to ChatGPT? You know, like a real person, where you're able to use real sentences and converse in natural language. Could it be more than just a chatbot? Could it be a mentor, an assistant, or perhaps even a friend? So, in an attempt to answer this question, I built this, a wearable ChatGPT companion that you can have conversations with using natural language. You can clip it onto your shirt and take it with you wherever you go. And admittedly, it is a little bit big and bulky and doesn't look very good because it's an early prototype, but it actually does work. Let me show you. Greg, say hello to my YouTube audience. Hello, YouTube audience. Greg here. Hope you're all doing well, and I'm excited to see what we can chat about today. Fire away with your questions or topics. And that's right, I actually gave this thing a name. And if you wanna try this out, I actually made a free website where you can go to to play around with it. It's been kind of a side project that I've been working on for the past year. The link should be shown on the screen right now, so if you wanna check it out, here it is. Now let's dive into exactly what this device is that I'm holding and how it works. I built my wearable device from these three components here. In the middle is a Raspberry Pi, and no, I'm not talking about dessert. It's actually just a little computer that sits on this board right here. And then on the left and right are what are called Pi Hats. On the left is a battery so that I can make my device mobile, and on the right is an audio card that has a microphone and speaker so that I can talk to it, and it can talk back to me. And then I just assembled it all together using a few screws. But getting the software to work was a little bit more tricky, but I'm a software engineer by trade, so honestly, it wasn't too bad. To put it simply, it works like this. This device is streaming all the audio to a server I have set up in the cloud. This server is then streaming this audio to Google Speech to Text Service. This is a service that Google offers that will convert everything I'm saying into text. Then once I have enough text, I'm sending that off to GPT-4 to get a response. Once the GPT-4 responds, I'll convert that back into speech using OpenAI's text-to-speech. And then I'm playing the audio on these speakers here. It honestly is fairly straightforward. There's a lot of streaming data I'm dealing with, but after a little bit of trial and error, I was able to get it to work. Now, the really cool thing about this is I'm using GPT-4, which is OpenAI's latest and greatest AI model. It provides the largest context of any model out there. As of filming this video, it provides up to 128,000 tokens of context. In other words, this translates roughly into half a million characters or about 83,000 words using some simplifying assumptions. Or to put it another way, you would have to talk for 10 hours continuously to reach that 83,000 word limit. This device can remember all of that and provide you with intelligent responses about anything you said within those 10 hours. This brings me to my first point about why this thing is so incredible, memory. I don't know about you, but if you're getting older, you kind of realize that your memory isn't quite as good as it used to be. Sometimes you forget a fact here or there, or you have to ask someone to repeat something. To get around this, you could take a lot of notes or just record all your conversations. It would be so much easier just to have GPT-4 listen to everything you say, analyze your conversations so that you can ask about it later. In fact, let's try it right now. Greg, could you tell me something I've been talking about? It seems you've been excitedly discussing the capabilities of particularly its memory capacity, which is significantly greater than previous models. You've highlighted the ability of four to hold a large context window of around 83,000 words, which could compare to roughly 10 hours of continuous speech as one of the reasons why it's so incredible. You've also touched on the challenges of human memory as we age and proposed that GPT-4 could effectively serve as a tool to compensate for these lapses by recalling information from conversations it has been privy to. Would you like to explore more about GPT-4's functions or continue discussing human memory and technology? Now, I'm not sure about you, but I find this tremendously useful. But this device goes so much farther than just memory and recall, which brings me to my second point, knowledge. The way GPT-4 works, or any of these large language models, is that they have essentially been trained in all the publicly available data on the internet, which is a lot of data. This means they know all the articles, the documents, books, magazines, and much more. And this is a big deal because these texts 
cumulatively essentially contain all of human knowledge. And this little device can immediately tell you any question, any topic that you might have. And it brings it directly to you in a personalized manner to answer the question that you asked. Now there are some limitations with this. It doesn't have the most up-to-date information and sometimes in order for it to have like a fluid flowing conversation with you, sometimes it will hallucinate a little bit, but as these models improve, that will become less and less of a big deal. So these things are pretty amazing. You want to know anything, you can just ask. Want to know how to build something, just ask. Want to know how to cook something, just ask. In fact, let's try it now. Greg, could you give me a short recipe for fish tacos? Sure, I can give you a simple recipe for fish tacos. One pound white fish, like cod, mahi-mahi, or tilapia. One tablespoon olive oil. One teaspoon ground cumin. One teaspoon paprika, or smoked paprika for a smokier flavor. A half teaspoon garlic powder. Salt and pepper to taste. Eight small corn or flour tortillas. Two cups shredded cabbage or coleslaw mix. One ripe avocado, sliced. Fresh cilantro, chopped for garnish, lime wedges for serving. Okay, that's good enough for that. And then this brings me to my final point about GPT-4 is that these things are so intelligent. GPT-4 isn't about accessing all this knowledge. It's about actually having conversations with you and helping you reason about what you're trying to do. It'll be able to analyze your conversations that you have for up to 10 hours if you were to talk to it continuously and give you intelligent insights about what you've said. It'll be able to answer questions about your conversational history, which is super important. And it does all of this in a very human-like fashion. But as you heard, it sounds like a human too. In fact, one time I was waiting for a dinner reservation and I had this thing with me. And because I was so bored, I used it to play a game with me to help pass the time. So let me, so let me clip this onto my shirt real quick. I'm just using a magnet to hold it in place. So we set out to answer the question, is this device more than just a chatbot? Is it a mentor, an assistant, perhaps even a friend? Well, I can confidently say it's not a friend, but it's definitely super useful when you're trying to actually do things in your life that require some knowledge that you perhaps you don't have. And the way that I can talk to it using natural language and have it talk back to me is frankly amazing. It makes it so much easier and so much more natural to have conversations with it. And because it can remember up to 10 hours worth of conversations that you had with it, all this context makes it give you really amazing answers. Frankly, I am so surprised that this thing works as well as it does. I plan on using this for a lot of daily tasks now. In fact, I was cooking dinner the other night and I literally just opened up the fridge and it was able to like step by step walk me through a cooking recipe for those tailored ingredients. It also was incredible and it turned out pretty well. And I think going into the future, you're gonna see more devices like this. These are gonna become ubiquitous because it, they're so useful. It's hard to deny the usefulness of these devices because they bring so much knowledge directly into your particular situation and they do it in such a personalized manner that it's so easy to ingest. But just remember you saw one of the first wearable chat GPT devices here. So to sum it all up, I do think that these will become more than just chatbots and become super useful companions that you'll use in your daily life. With that being said, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.